Hello and welcome to our report card for the DNA. If you haven't seen one of these before, basically what I do is go back and revisit a ball that's been out for a few months to check in, see how popular it's been, see if I got it right in the review, and report on how much we've used it and what it's best at. Also, since it is a report card, I will actually be giving out grades, or rating rather, using the new Kool-Aid meter. The staffers always robe up and pass the cups out for every new release, but are they still drinking it a few months down the road? Before we get started, big shout out and thanks as always to Royal Crest Lanes. They're a big part of bringing these videos to you. All it takes is a text and we have everything we need. Also, my code ROSEDALL10 will get you 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick, and if you check the description, you'll find a bunch of helpful links and information, including our personal specs, a discount code for custom ball cups and spinners through Scarred Prints, even a discount code for a new affiliation with Free Spirits, which features non-alcoholic replacements for things like whiskey, tequila, and gin for those looking or needing to cut back on and or quit drinking, and finally a link to buy the DNA at Bowler's Mart. I do receive a 5% commission on all sales through the link. We're on the Kegel Chromium lane condition as usual. It's a challenge pattern at just under a 7 to 1 ratio. 42 feet long, 25 and a half mils, heavy side of medium for both volume and length. Not as easy as a house shot, but not as punishing as a sport pattern. Yes, breaking news, there is in fact a storm ball out and available called the DNA. Doesn't seem like anyone knows that. I've seen exactly one out in the wild. I never see anyone talking about it, and that really confuses me because I quite like mine. I think it's the most versatile big ball since the reality, and I think marketing, unfortunately, has hurt this one significantly. The DNA features the new EXO cover, which Storm has billed as their new strongest ever, that's mistake number one, in addition to the new Supercoil core, which is an insanely strong asymmetric core, coming in at a very low 247RG, a strong 053 differential, and a big 023 int diff in 15 pounds, making it the strongest core in the catalog right now outside of possibly the Rad 4 from the Code series. The result isn't what you'd expect. This core reminds me a lot of the ShapeLock HD core from the Virtual series, uh, which we have in the Virtual Energy Blackout right now. It's not nearly as early rolling as the numbers say it should be, it doesn't slow down at all, and with a bit of shine, it, it's actually fairly sharp on the back end. Not reality sharp, but not far off. Now while it does have a lot of traction and is a quite strong ball, it doesn't have the super heavy chuggy roll of a gem or an exotic or an eternity pie that helps it slow down and dig in, uh, but it's also not as fast as a reality which makes up in shape for what it lacks in raw strength, and it's not as tumbly as its predecessor, the Supernova, so at face value it's not your typical strongest ball we've ever made type of look or feel. It may technically be on paper, but it doesn't act like it is, and I'm pretty sure that's what's throwing people. In addition, moving to James here, it suffered from the same cross-contamination that the TNT did. Uh, we both tried to throw them out of box, and mine actually went straighter than my mix. And now that we knew the drill, we didn't even waste time trying to film, no point. Now with a ball this strong, burning up is a real consideration, much more so than with the TNT. However, we resurfaced James's ball right back to the box surface. You can tell it's quite dull, but it's having no trouble getting work done now. James had a slightly different experience with his than I did with mine. He could milk shape out of it, but it really wanted to be at third arrow or further right. For him, it acts like a massive step up from an IQ or a step to a step and a half up from a phase two, uh, which aside from looking like one from an optic standpoint, that's the best way to describe it. It's a stronger, earlier, and smoother phase two. This doesn't look like your typical oil monster, especially because it's not early, it doesn't slow down, and it doesn't really shape much down lane, but what it does extremely well is control the mid lane better than just about any ball out there. James couldn't move too far left with it, which really damaged the versatility for him, but it was funny uh, that for a solid month, he couldn't shoot less than 260 the first game in league because it was a strong rolling pocket destroyer. Super controllable, it has that round continuous motion that makes the pocket huge. It may not have the big back end motion, but it never missed the mid lane, so it'd just pick up and throw pins sideways. Now this is the heart and soul of what strong balls are supposed to do really control the mid lane and give you traction and stability on wetter conditions. They aren't supposed to try to dig in and then create shape through the mud.
I took it down to a thousand and then finished it lightly with step two as usual. That adds quite a bit more length and shape than I was expecting, and I think it's a lot easier to see what the ball actually does watching me because of the lower rev rate. Uh, you can see the ball doesn't start winding up at all until 30 feet. Uh, it casually skids, and then you can see it really start revving very quickly at 30 feet, but it doesn't instantly jerk or move. It gives it a couple more feet, and then it just walks in. This is an incredibly effective shape for me because typically I can't throw stuff this strong because it just hooks too soon, too much, is too slow. Uh, take your pick, parlay them, whatever. This one, however, is both clean and waits to spin up until further down the lane, but then it doesn't turn sideways when it hits friction. It rolls strongly off of it. I can play straighter because the ball actually makes it down the lane and is fairly blendy, or with a simple hand adjustment, I can cover some boards and make it pop. I actually use this ball quite a bit in league and really regret the fact that it was marketed as this giant hook monster because that's not remotely close to describing what this ball does. However, it's not a gem, but it's not a reality, plus I heard a ton of people say that they had the same experience at matchmakers all over the country. The ball would just not hook period for them, and I think it's in large part due to them being left at box surface. For James, it's a 7 aggregate. It's like a 3 left of 3rd arrow, but like an 11 right of 3rd arrow, but James spends 95% of his life inside of 3rd arrow, so ultimately it's hard to put a ball like that in his bag that's going to come out for a single game when he can just edge left with something else and then continue to chase it left with that same ball. Uh, for him, the DNA is a one-trick pony, a really good trick, just he has plenty of his own tricks and can't justify carrying it around. For me, it's an 8. It's a little too strong for regular use, and ASIMs are usually just too much torque no matter how smooth they are. But I can use this ball in a lot of situations, on a lot of different conditions. It's very versatile with lane play. I can add surface or leave it shiny. It's a ball I can really trust to give me a look on just about everything. I have a review up for the DNA covering it from several different angles, plus a handful of comparison videos if you want to check those out. Down in the description is a link to Bowler's Mart that will get one ordered for you. Also, of course, don't forget my code ROSEDALL10 to get 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.